In today's reading from Mark, we get the story of the Pharisees critiquing Jesus' disciples for not washing their hands, uh, and then talking as well about how to observe Torah, how to observe the traditions that come from Torah. And there's a really easy pitfall, a really easy trap to fall into here, I think, um, and that, that I've fallen into myself, but many of us can fall into when we read about the Pharisees. The Pharisees are always the bad guys in the Christian New Testament. And a, a quick reading, a stereotypical reading, a reading that looks at the Pharisees first and foremost as, as legalists or too focused on details, leads, I think, in a way that can be difficult, if not dangerous, to thinking about Jesus's relationship to God's commandments, thinking about Jesus's relationship to Torah as a kind of um, either a zero-sum game or the idea that Jesus is getting rid of the commandments or getting rid of Torah or even trying to start this new thing called Christianity. And we have to remember that he's not. That, that Jesus the teacher, Jesus the rabbi, is not saying that God's commandments are unimportant, is not saying that Torah is unimportant, is not trying to start a new different thing called Christianity as much as trying to help his fellow Jews to figure out how to follow the commands of God and what way to do it. And in a way that hopefully spills out to those of us who are Gentiles, those of us who are uh, grafted on to the story of the God of Abraham and Sarah, the story of the God of Moses and Miriam. And so we had to be cautious here about not falling into the easy trap of saying, well, the Pharisees wanted to follow Torah and Jesus said that's not as important. Instead, Jesus is asking us, how do we follow God's commands? How do we do that well? What are some of the, the habits? What are some of the problems? What are some of the sins that we fall into in our following of God's commands? And the first one is the easy one here, the question of hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is pretty common. We're all hypocrites, at least I am. We, we all have the, the vision of ourselves that we put out into the world, the vision of ourselves as the person recording a, a recorded sermon on a Tuesday, um, and the reality of that we know of how much we fail to live up to the ideals that we preach, the ideals that we hope in, the ideals of Christian discipleship that we try to live out. You notice that the complaint Jesus is calling out of these Pharisees' hypocrisy only becomes a problem because they have used it to judge someone else. So that might have something important to tell us about how our hypocrisy is a problem, not just when we recognize the gap that's almost always there between who we're called to be and who we're on the way to being um, and who we actually are, but the way in which if we forget that and then use our false image as a, a, a platform from which to judge others, um, then we have some real problems. But there's, there's, I think, a second more subtle complication here, and the kind of thing that uh, people watching a recorded sermon from their parish are probably a little more susceptible to. If, we, if you're spiritually serious, you recognize your own hypocrisy. If you're spiritually serious, though, we also need to recognize some of our own complacency at times. Where do we fall short of what God is asking us, commanding us, inviting us to do in order to be our best selves and live our best life? And for many of us, perhaps, I'll speak for myself, we have those areas of our religious life, our spiritual life, our moral life at which we're pretty good. And we have the areas of our spiritual life, our religious life, our moral life that are a little more dusty a little more hidden in the shadows, a little more easily overlooked by us, the things that we have done or the things that we have failed to do, that we don't really expect more of ourselves enough for sometimes. So Jesus, perhaps in, in talking about how to follow commands of God, how to follow Torah, might have something to say to us about the continuing need for renewal as we are in these last weeks before we begin another season of Lent. And the third thing I want to say that, that might relate to that, how do we change in our observance of God's love, is not just a matter of um, screwing up our energy and trying really harder, uh, but being open to God's grace and being open to the transformation of following God's commands, not as an act of fear, not as an act of attempting to get on God's good side, not as an attempt to sort of um, be the best little boy or girl in the world, but to change our motivation from fear to love, from anxiety about what 
God expects of us to doing what God asks of us out of love for God and love for neighbor. When Jesus talks in the Gospel of John that we are no longer slaves but friends, how do we live that out? So in today's Gospel, as we're thinking about how it is that we fall short, how it is that we treat ourselves when we fall short, and how it is that we treat others when they fall short, we might ask for the grace um, to uh, get rid of some of our complacency, make us more aware of some of our hypocrisy, and then the deep grace of, of the Holy Spirit bringing God's love into our hearts such that um, following God's commands becomes an act of joy, an act of love for God and love for neighbor, rather than simply a duty or rather than simply a hand-handed attempt to earn our own salvation.